Welcome to Lessons from the Playroom. In this podcast, Lisa Dion will help you explore the little things that make a big difference in play therapy. Lisa is a founder of Synergetic Play Therapy. You know, sometimes therapists get all caught up trying to study big theories and mastering techniques to help children like me. But sometimes it's the little things we show you along the way that make the biggest difference. Join Lisa as she teaches you some of the little lessons that children are trying to communicate to you so that you can help us in the best ways possible. And on behalf of all the kids you work with, thanks for listening and believing in us. Let's get started. Hi, listeners. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode from the Lessons from the Playroom podcast. I feel very blessed and very honored to have with me someone that I have been really looking forward to having a conversation with for many, many, many years. Um, our first interaction, even though it wasn't directly, there was a sort of a, a, kin, a kindred spirit connection that, that an immediate, I want to know you. And this, uh, this moment and this conversation feels like a long time in the making. Um, I am welcoming today Marie-José Diaz, who is in Canada, although not originally from Canada. She's from France. She is a registered clinical counselor, a registered art therapist, a registered play therapy supervisor, certified play therapist um, supervisor, and she has created a beautiful playroom, although it's more like a play home, really, a play home on a beautiful piece of property that is called the Center for Expressive Therapy, which is where she works with children and also does her teachings and her trainings. She is um, a legend, in my opinion, in the field. She has been working with children and families for over 45 years. She's the creator of Holistic Expressive Play Therapy. We're gonna be talking about that um, today. She's a frequent speaker. She, um, uh, she's, a, she's, Marie Jose, you're a blessing to, uh, to, to our field. I am so grateful that you have joined us. Yeah, thank you. I've tried to be a blessing. <laughs> Let's, um, I shared with you before we got on that I really wanted the listeners to know you a little bit more. You have such a beautiful story and what I have read and what I have understood about your story has influenced so much of why you do what you do, why you believe what you believe, how you created holistic expressive play therapy and I would like our listeners to know you a little bit more. So would you would you take us on a journey from, from oh, France? Well, I'll take you to a little village in France. Mm -hmm. um, a small village just a couple of years after the Second World War in Normandy. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine um, the situation there. And so I was raised by... Um, farmers who had gone through two world wars because my parents would have been the generation of the, where they were children in the first world war. So I would say I was baked in trauma mm -hmm. <laughs> from, from one generation to the next. And, and I, I was a bit different, um, a, a dreamer. And my obsession <laughs> was that I wanted to touch the sky. So in our yard, um, we had a big yard on the farm and I could see where the sky and the hedge would touch the horizon. And I thought that was how I would touch it. And so I, my mother found me a few times running back and forth, trying to touch. And I was always so disappointed that when I got there, there it was far away and, um, Yes. So that was kind of, I don't think I've ever stopped longing uh, for that. So, um, yeah. So I, 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 um, I would say that's pretty well, you know, at, at my, at the source of um, my life. Um, There's a beautiful story 
that you have shared about being with your mother one day out in nature and asking her yes. about God yes. and, and, and discovering or hearing something about that there's this this thing inside all of us or it, it, it tapped you into some fundamental knowing? Yes. Well, um, I, you know, a young, uh, being a, a Catholic country uh, in those days, you had to go to catechism as soon as you were about six years old, five, six years old. And so I heard about God having no beginning, no middle and no end. And I was trying to figure that out as I walked back and forth to school. And so um, finally, when the summer came, um, um, my mother, uh, I would go with her while she was gleaning in the wheat fields after the men had cut the, the wheat, then the women picked up the little pieces there. And, and, um, and finally, we had a bit of time. It was very hot. And I sat by her side and I asked her where God was and what she did. And I'll never forget. Oh. She picked up the sheath of, of wheat, one of the ones, took out a seed, took out the cover and showed me the seed with that little white dot. And she said, that's where God is. Oh. Yeah. And so for me, my, my whole approach is based on seeing each and every one of us being a different kind of seed and that we have that life, for, life force and that drive to grow towards the light. And it's a very powerful force. And, and I, all my life, I've always looked for plants that grow like through rocks and asphalt and and so to me that's what i uh, i focus on is uh, helping people uh, wake wake up that force inside them uh -huh. because uh, so that they that's what i try to engage and that's what i've seen uh, until you can engage it unless you see it in the other uh, it has been so buried for a lot of the children that I see that that it 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 makes a huge difference because they see it in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think it was that has drawn you to really focusing on children who've really gone through a lot? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I I you know you can imagine that. Um, um, I'll see. It's very rare that anybody with my background in my generation would leave the village mm -hmm. and manage to go and get an education and uh, go, went to boarding school. So um, as soon as I was able to, uh, well, I went to university as first, which was quite rare for anybody in my background. And as soon as I could, I started wanting to get away and travel. Um, so you can imagine that being a young woman in 1966, 67, 68, uh, 68, I landed in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois to teach French. Um, I had a few adventures, you know, starting from my childhood and obviously the kind of people that I would be drawn to as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, I had a big crash um, eventually where I, I had to be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. I traveled through about three to, well, England, the U.S. and then Canada. And so, and that's where I started, you know, be, it caught up with me basically and and I knew I wanted to heal myself and in that search to heal myself I realized this is what I want to do and I discovered you know I somehow they, there was a part of me that would know what to do in some cases to be there so I've always 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 worked on myself as well as developed my my work at the same time yeah one of the things that um, has struck me profoundly by the way that you approach working with, with children and with families is um, the sense of 
really providing them the experiences that they did not have or providing them a real sense of um, repair or a sense of, of, of a new experience. I, I love it so much when I hear stories or when I hear and I've read you talk about even basic things like if a child doesn't have food, you start with food, you yeah. know, um, if a child, um, you know, what, what, whatever they're, they're, they're missing, right. You, you, you start and you, and you build, um, build, build up the, the nurturing, build up the, the positive experiences. I don't necessarily think that that's the way many play therapists start, I think that it almost feels like you start one step even further back, even even your your center that you have it being more like a a home and and what that offers for a child to ex, to experience. I would love for you to share a little bit about how you have created what you've created and a little bit um, about holistic expressive play therapy. But there's something really unique and special about the way that you uh, approach it in a really profound healing kind of a kind of a way well what i try you know my my first um what i see it as essential to always start where the person is at mm -hmm. in their primary need so whatever that might be you know that's where we're gonna we're gonna take care of that but also for they need to feel valued and seen mm -hmm. you cannot feel connected without being seen mm -hmm. you and and it's the being seen that i focus on mm -hmm. and and the sensing of what that primary need is mm -hmm. and then providing it mm -hmm. so i you know, my first years in this field, um, I was um, I worked in a in a treatment center for adolescents, mm -hmm. and that was sink or swim. Let me tell you, uh -huh. yeah. And and so I learned I learned that therapy could be done anywhere at three o'clock in the morning when there's an earthquake. <laughs> this, <laughs> you know, do you have to? to comfort them, or it could be in the kitchen, or it could be while you're driving somewhere. Or So I, by the time I moved on to working with children, which is what I really wanted to do, I, I didn't have anybody to tell me what I could do and not do, because there wasn't anything where I was. So I, I continued, you know, to see what the child needed. And then if I didn't have it, next time I would have it. Uh -huh. And it worked. And that's how I built everything I have. Yeah, that, that's there's just there's just something in that that feels so different to me about um, the way a lot of play therapists approach play therapy. Because what I'm hearing you say, it's not about a protocol. So it's, it's not about an, an an intervention. It's not about you're not even saying play therapy is this and it's not this. What I'm hearing you say is taking, just taking a walk outside is therapy. Yeah. Um, getting a glass of water together is therapy. Mm -hmm. um, having someone lie down and put a blanket on them because they're tired is therapy. Mm -hmm. Having someone spend time playing with your dog is, is therapy. And I think that's what I find so, so beautiful is you're not putting therapy in a container. Well, you know, therapy, I, I'm healing is what is important to me. Mm -hmm. And I think they're different. Yeah. Because what what I focus on is how am I going to help this person connect to who they truly are in their true nature, which is where all the answers are to help them heal themselves. Yeah. So I need to make them feel safe physically, emotionally, cognitively, depending on the age, and spiritually, which, which I mean by seeing them and their value and their true nature. So, so it, it's kind of layers and layers of, of safety that, that you create to hold them. Mm -hmm. 
so that they can relax enough to connect with who they are. Mm -hmm. And it comes to them. It's just amazing. And just, you know, and I have never stopped doing the work, by the way. I still have a full practice and uh, not, I don't see able to see as many people as I used to or as many days, but I don't. I can't, I can't imagine not doing it, mm -hmm. but one of the best sessions I had last week was, it was pouring rain. And this girl who is, is um, selective, has selective mutism and has gone through horrors. Uh, we went and, and played in the puddles, and, <laughs> you know, and, and with gumboots. And uh, she, it was one of the best sessions she'd ever had. And the connection, this, in the next session, she came and she wanted to draw, right, and stay inside, and 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 was able to get to to the other parts because she'd ex experienced something uh, before, and and of course now they're saying that nature is essential, and then you know uh, animals and expressive therapies. I was a bit of a strange bird back in the early eighties. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. You're, you, you keep using this, this word safety. I'm curious if you had to define that, how would you actually define what safety is or what it feels like? More than anything, I think it's to feel is to feel received and connected with someone. Mm -hmm. So safety in the, in the presence of another. Because mm -hmm. um, safety alone with your companion mm -hmm. in a cabin and you feel safe is very different when a person has had gone through complex trauma and so on, because People is where the trauma is, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you have to feel safe in the presence of another human being, mm -hmm. and it's safe with somebody who's going to guide you to connect with yourself and recognize that uh, the things I've seen come out of the children, the, what they've created, and so on. It's, it, it, I, you know. It, it's not just a word for me, innate wisdom. That is, and I've never met anybody that didn't have it. Yeah. Some people are more disconnected from it than others. Yeah. But the safety has to do with feeling held without touch in a way, you know, all surrounded um, by this gentle warmth. Mm. Right. And you know that you, 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 you can be accepted emotionally, you know, any feelings you have will be accepted and followed and, and guided through, you know, being able to have them without getting in trouble. Right? <laughs> That's what the, and, and, and if there's something that you don't understand that you want to know, you know, it, it's safe to ask any question. And, you know, so physically, of course, here, no one gets hurt. Emotionally, you can have all the range of feelings and cognitively and then in the whole time you're being seen and helped to get closer to who you are which is very unique yes. and so so i always see it as a mixture of nature mm -hmm. nurture and trauma mm -hmm. and how they've come together is as unique as your fingerprints mm -hmm. very much so so if I go in there thinking I know how it's going to be what to do. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and even as you're talking about our own individual blueprint, mm -hmm. I, I'm appreciating, well, there's, there's an assumption I'm making right now, so you can let me know if this assumption is correct or not, but uh, what I'm aware of is you have so many different opportunities and ways that a child can express themselves. So whether it is um, through the puppets or through the sand or through outdoor areas you've created or different spaces in the in your play in your play in your playroom, but there's 
there's so many, right? There's so many different or, or, um, or something like, like the kitchen or something like that. And, and I'm, I'm making the assumption that part of also how you work is that, that the child chooses and that the child, the child's own innate wisdom, if we're going to use um, your beautiful words, guides them, right? Is guiding them towards the experience that they need, not the experience I think that they need, but the experience that they know inside that they need. Is that a correct assumption? Yes, but that takes quite a bit because some children who are so very disconnected from themselves will need a different kind of holding yeah. than a child who is right there. So mm-hmm. it's always finding that that kind of combination of freedom and containment that is going to guide them to that connection and for, to themselves and where it comes then, right? Mm-hmm. So it takes a bit because it's very anxiety provoking for some children to just be purely child-centered and say, you know, you may use these any way you wish. <gasps> right? Well, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Especially yes. if they have a, um, a trauma attached to attempting to express something or do something and then being scolded or shamed or something, there might even be a, I don't, I don't want to put myself out there because that hasn't gone well in the past. No, Mm -hmm. no. And, and they, some of them, they so, they spend so much of their time and energy reading you to see how you're going to react and seeing if they should push you a little bit to see how you'll react and, Mm -hmm. you know, to establish safety. You, I always tell people, you think that you're interviewing children, you've got something coming. (laughs) We know how to interview you and figure out what kind of a grown up you're going to be and test you. Yeah. And um, if you have a button somewhere, they will sense it. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. And who you can feel it and coming close. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yes. So time for a therapy session. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ray Jose, will you will you talk to us a little bit about how you um, came up with or even just the premise of um, holistic expressive play therapy? Yeah. Well, it's been a long journey. Um, um, and I, it always, um, it, it started for me with thinking about healing and how healing came about. And I thought of it so often using the metaphor of a wound of some kind. So some people have more pus and infection than others, you know. So I was always looking for safe ways. And that would take into account physical, emotional, cognitive, spiritual together, safe ways of kind of expressing and transforming this pus, Uh right? Mm-hmm. It, and so that whatever was there and that needed healing could go. So that's what I call the healing from in the inside out. Mm-hmm. And then in order to um, have to, you know, you, you kind of let the pass out, you clean it up through the expressive therapies mm-hmm. and the whole range of expressive therapies. Oops, sorry. And they each need to do something different. Here we go. I, there you go. Where I always ask my students to not have their phone. <laughs> I think this, that will be. <laughs> so there's the inside out through the expressive therapy and then outside in. Then I was, was thinking then I used more natural materials and the multisensory of nature and natural materials to put like ointment on it. Oh. Right? And so throughout um, the expression and transformation, they would always be expressing soothing, expressing oh. soothings for one little bit of inside out, three times the outside in, the milieu, the ointment. Oh. Yeah. Now, so I would say 
the, from the beginning, the first component was the healing from the inside out through the expressive therapy and the outside in through the milieu. But then you can have all the milieu expressive therapies in the world. The most important one, of course, is the relationship, especially with attachment issues. How are you going to do that without using, you know, doing that? And, and, and then I would say that once you know, you have a session with a beginning, a middle, and an end where there's ointment on it. And we end with a little ritual, a closing ritual, so that they look forward to closing their session. And then you give them back. But if the person who takes them back rips it off and pokes it, then, you know, it's very hard to go anywhere. So that's why then I work with the family and caregiver as much as I can, because in some cases, you know, that's not going to be possible so yeah. so that was kind of what i came to and i guess i should say how i came to it was after working in a treatment center i was asked uh, to run a day program for adolescents who were on the street at night and they would be with me during the day half asleep and trying to engage them and do stuff with them and then realizing you know i don't want to wait till they are adolescents you guys are going to let me see the children. Mm -hmm. So they sent me the children who were in therapeutic foster home. Nobody was seeing and they responded really well. I, the, it was a matter of us, you know, we, we developed it together, like with each one, you know, I would discover what, what helped them feel more yeah. relaxed and open and their own way of expression. Mm -hmm. And I started by being an art therapist, but I soon found that, you know, most kids were not at the stage where they were able to draw, or wanted to draw. Mm -hmm. So then I looked for other ways of making imagery. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I used to take them to the ocean a lot, like Vancouver, <laughs> 1980. Oh my God. I, he gave me a car so I could drive to Jericho Beach and 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 I mean, you have like sand to walk barefoot and and I saw how the sand and the water made such a difference to them and eventually I had too many children coming so I didn't have time to drive to the beach and so I had them get, make me a, a box, an outdoor sandbox, and then used some of the things we gathered because, you know, I, I you know, just had seashells and feathers and driftwood, that kind of thing. And I got into kayaking in those days too. So, um, and and uh, not with the children though, uh, <laughs> my, on my, <laughs> yeah, and 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 then we. Um, we um, we made images in you know outside in the sandbox, and I was surprised with some of the things that were starting to happen. I could see some images emerging, and I always used photography in those days to make them an album of memories with the things they'd made and so on. And I could see there was like a pattern in this. And, you know, we also have a lot of rain. So sometimes we couldn't go outside in the sandbox outside. So um, the children, you know, asked for it when they came. And then I said, well, I'm sorry, I don't have a sandbox outside. And they said, and they said well, why not? I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> Fun. And so I went to the photography store, Lens and Shutters, and got a photography tray okay. and got some sand from Jericho Beach and cooked it at my house. And I'm telling you, it smells and <laughs> it and everything because it smells way worse if you don't cook it. And 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 it's that's how it all started and and continued on. And eventually um, I um, the program I was running was shut down. And so I. Um, um, I had the choice to become a social worker or quit. And I said I would quit and try and do it in my basement, in my little house in East Vancouver. And, and I, then I went back to, uh, to university, to UBC, where I had come at first to teach French. 
but so and I was then I went in the master's program and I met John Allen who was there and he said wow what are you doing you know he wanted he liked to see what I was doing and then he said you know there is a woman in Switzerland her name's Dora Kauf and she does stuff like this you should look her up and so so um I I found that Dora Kauf existed but she uh, was not happy to be um, when I told her I'd been told I was doing sand play. I said, "How dare you! You went trained with me." So I never went to Dora Kauf because she was so unpleasant, oh. and I continued with developing my own way, which I teach now. Yeah. So now you have a story. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's beautiful, and it so highlights the phrase that I loved when you said, "Well, we built it together." That oh, the, yes. what you you built it with well, you built it with the kids. Oh. Oh, right. you, you, you oh. built it alongside and here's a, here's an experience of them saying, well, why don't you have it? And you said, I don't know. Yes, of course. And let's, let's, let's create it. And oh. there's yeah. such a felt sense in, in that for me, when I hear you say it, and it's such a, it's such a, for me, it's such a visceral felt sense of what you mean when you say meet the child where they're, where they're at and how do I, attend to something that needs something or would like a particular experience and how that can create safety and help them feel seen. So I just, it's beautiful. I, I feel it in my heart as you're, as you're describing it. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I'm so grateful to the children and, and I, I definitely wouldn't be sitting here with you if, if it wasn't for them and it's continued to be like that and from then on everything that i've developed has continued to be between the people who came to me and everything i knew didn't help them so i had to stretch right and together we discovered something that worked and then i would add it and that's kind of how it yeah. went now. when you think of play therapy today or play therapists and training today. I mean, we've got listeners right now from all over the world, some that are just beginning, some that have been doing it for a while. Is there a, a wish you hold or a message that you would like to offer the play therapy community? Well, number one, I'm very grateful for them help, wanting to help children. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they 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 never lose that love and why they're doing it i think as long as they can maintain that and their humility is very important i think because the the more i spent you know time in the inner world it, it it is very it seems simple but it's very complex and there's a lot and it's rich and there's always more to discover and we know very little mm -hmm. So I would say that would be important. And, you know, your own light, because without that, if it, you know, they walk in that room, if you're not connected and shining it, and you learn, you know, some need it stronger than others, right? You have, mm -hmm. uh, but, but then nothing else is going to happen. And I would say, I would encourage every play therapist to discover their own innate wisdom and make sure that whatever they take into that playroom, yeah. they've digested and made their own. Because I've seen the harm in imitations. I've seen sometimes people who've gone to so many workshops and they have so much information, but you see the poor child trying to kind of being mixed up from one way of being to the other. So I always encourage people to find their own true theoretical background. Like how do they see themselves and hu human beings and healing and, and what it is that they do that that meaning is essential. And, yes. and it's, yeah, it's been challenging lately for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I came at a time I did because um it has become so cognitive in some ways mm -hmm. that i i don't have you know like that's where i still have some learning kinds of things why i don't write <laughs> because um some of the little scars left on my brain i think that i haven't been able to clear 
totally. And so I, it was a good, you know, I, I to trust I came at the right time. And and I I um I think each person brings something. You you have I love the little bit that I hear because it's like, wow, she's saying the same thing with neuro, with, <laughs> you know, like with a different language. This is wonderful. And the world now needs the more scientific words because the co- like without that, people wouldn't feel cognitively safe. And that's what you're doing. You, you help them feel cognitively safe with what they're doing. But I think we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. 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 One of my beliefs that I have often have, have held is that when, um, when a child looks into your eyes, they're searching for the twinkle. Yeah. And, and that's my way of saying do you know yourself? Because that's my belief when, when we're connected with our own sense of self and our own innate wisdom, there's a natural twinkle, right? There's a, there's a natural, um, um, I don't know. There's something that, that's, that's, um, it's a little bit more of a connection or a lot more of a connection. And I, I believe kids know that and they see it and they pick, they pick up on it. So, I love what I love. I love what you're saying, and I love the mirror that's uh, that's happening in our in our conversation. And I just love. I know I've said this so many times in this conversation. I just I love profoundly love and appreciate this piece. I said at the beginning, it's like it's like where you're working is. So many play therapists want to jump, want to just jump right in. And what I hear you saying is, no, 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 no. Hold on. There's a step before that. Mm-hmm. Right, there, there, there's a step before that and the step is about real deep attunement and real deep connection and real deep seeing and real and and I just thank you for that reminder because I think our field sometimes is going too quickly and jumping in too fast to solve the problem or change the symptom or you know meet the goal and and there's just this whole step right before all of that yeah, because you know what, there's a focus on pathology and what we need to fix, and and that you know that we get, I mean that the pressure is on to do that and fast, mm-hmm. cheap and fast and quick, right? That's increased. I've seen the change happen very much so, and and um, and I've seen it do harm, mm-hmm. and and so and I've seen really good people being burnt out. Like so many people that I, you know, taught because I've been sharing this stuff for what, 30, over 35 years now, maybe more. And a lot of them have retired and burnt out or because um, because of, well, we, without that connection to ourselves, this world is impossible to manage. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's great depression and disconnection. And... Um, and of course, you know, I personally, I go, you know, I'm never always sparkly or connected. I'm still looking for <laughs> that connection, you know, like I don't know anyone who has it all the time. Exactly. And, but um, but that's, you know, that's a primary one. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has just been beautiful. Um, so appreciate the connection and appreciate knowing you a bit more and um i just I'm love that come to vancouver i am going to come to vancouver and i'm going to come say hi to you and i'm going to come spend some so spend some time with you um directly that is going to happen i would love for listeners i was noticing is that your dog in the background <laughs> yeah she's been sleeping she finds she finds these <laughs> because this is where I sit when I do online sessions mm-hmm. right here because you know of COVID and all that and uh, and she is really missing seeing people in person which I do again now but yes. yeah can you give us your website so that the listeners can go and learn more about you and see what you're doing Okay, so it's www.centerforexpressivetherapy.com. So that's pretty simple. 
It, and you, even if you you spell it center with an R or E-R, it will show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there's a tour of my garden and my playroom. And right, it doesn't look as beautiful right this moment because it's late fall here. So, And, and listeners, I'm going to really encourage you to go to her website and to get a feeling of her website and to watch the little video that takes you around uh, what she has created, because I think it'll take this conversation and bring it even to another depth and possibly give you some, some ideas or some inspiration, or if nothing else to leave you reflecting on what's possible, because you really have created something that is, it's quite magical. It's quite magical. It's quite extraordinary. I know if I was a child, I I, I would want to go and and spend time with you. I, I, I would want I would want to come and spend time in 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 what you have what you have um, co created with your with your children. Um, and I want to say I work with adults and adolescents also, so yeah. so they love it too. But one thing I would like to say is. I am older, I will soon be 75 years old, and I am always looking for young ones that I can pass on to what I have learned so that they can take it the next step. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to say that I'm putting it out there because I, I, uh, yeah, I would, I, I would love to be able to, uh, to share what I know, like what I've learned, um, because it will be helpful. I'm at the end of my career, so I'm not looking for a career, but I just really would like to be able to pass it on. And I, so I'm really grateful for this interview and you asking me. Yeah. Uh, it feels wonderful to be able to give what you've been given. Yeah. Thank you so much. And on behalf of all the kids and families that you have helped over the many, many, many years. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listeners, wherever you are in the world, I invite you to take a deep breath. I invite you to ground. I invite you to connect with yourself for a minute. Take care of yourselves, everyone. You're the most important toy in the playroom. Until next time. For more information on our courses and our classes, please go to our website at synergeticplaytherapy.com and check out what we have available to you. And as always, remember that you're the most important toy in that playroom.